So welcome, Laura Ciel, Dr. Laura Ciel. Thank you. <laughs> um, can we start by just, if I could ask you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Oh, what I do now. Um, a lot has changed in the last um, two months, but I'm, I'm licensed as a psychologist. I'm also accredited as a coach. I do leadership consulting, but the big shift and change in my work has been the start of a radio show. Um, five weeks ago. <laughs> so that's taken up a lot of my time now. And it's um, probably where the direction of where my work's going, work is going. I still do one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one work, but the radio show has taken up a lot of energy now. I can imagine. So um, what is it that you love about what you do right now? Hmm. I just love seeing the look on people's faces when they realize that maybe what they've been telling themselves all along, there's, it might not be the only way. So I love hearing it in their voices. I love feeling it energetically. I love seeing it in their faces, in their bodies. Just that realization that it doesn't have to keep being this way, that there could be something even more amazing around the corner. Because what, and what does that give you? What does it give me? Yeah. Um, oh, it makes me, I mean, I just get really excited and, and it gives me energy. And I think what it is, is just, I don't want anyone to be trapped into that feeling that it only has to be this one way. Yeah. And um, certainly what I know from here is that there's a lot of us that get trapped into that feeling like it's got to be this way. It's the only way. And we've got kind of a big wall around how else it could be. So I'm curious, like if you were, um, you know, when you meet people like that, um, what is it that, how do you help them? Like, how do you help them through the stuckness? Um, well, let me, let me give you an example because I, I'm a big one for stories. <laughs> um, I was speaking to someone doing a pre-interview for a possible guest on my show and she was talking about her story. And something wasn't like it just something wasn't quite connecting and I, I wasn't sure what it was. And so I asked different questions that maybe are unexpected <laughs> that push push a little bit the um, push you beyond the 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 contours of what you're used to responding to. And there was a moment where she suddenly said, Well, I'll tell you this, but I'm not sure I want to say it on the air. And that's when I knew that she was going into a different place. And it's, I believe that it's in those places where we can do, where we can really shift and change. And it was something that was very raw and vulnerable and sweet to her. And she had put a judgment as to whether or not she wanted to share it. And it was just that those kinds of moments with people are, you just see the possibilities open up. Yeah. I can see it. Um, I can see it reflected in you as you as you talk. You know, like what that gives you. I'm um, I'm also curious about. Um, so, has it always been easy for you to do what you love? Hmm, that's an interesting question because I I, I could answer yes or no. Um, <laughs> the no is. <laughs> I just thought that was the way everyone was. So when I was young, and I didn't think there was anything different about it and I certainly didn't see how that was a career or profession that I was to go into now I kind of worked my way and of course you know through psychology was as as, as close as I could get but it never it didn't directly tap into what I like so that that's the answer is like no it wasn't always easy because there were um there were categories and boxes and ways that I understood I was supposed to do things, so I was always trying to fit into that, and it didn't fit really easily. So that's the no part of it, but the yes part is yes. Like I just naturally, to me, when I if I'm traveling, if I'm meeting people in social situations, it's just I'm. I think it's just part of me. So it it does come easily. I just didn't identify that as something that I would do for work. Mm. And what so. what kind of advice would you give to someone who was trying to identify that like so they haven't even started yet. They know well, that I, the old doesn't fit, you know. Yeah. Well, you certainly can feel if it doesn't fit. And and I also um it, I I guess what I say is look at look at those places that 
really bring a lot of, like, energize you, that excite you, that come really, really easily to you. And, and don't be so quick to brush it off as, oh, that's just, that's just easy or that's nothing or, you know, we tend to brush that off for some reason as if it's, if it's really easy, it's meaningless. I don't know where that came from, but I certainly believe that I had to work hard and then it had meaning to it. If it was easy, it certainly wasn't valuable. So what I'd say is don't brush that off so easily. Really pay attention. What gets you excited? What feeds you? What energizes you? What, what would you do more and more of if you had more time and, and then start exploring. I mean, that, that's just, you know, one area that you can start and, and, and start exploring. Because because there may be something there that you've turned, you've you've pushed away without allowing it to open up and 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 really to explore whether or not there's something possible there that's different. And for someone that's um, kind of a bit fixated around, but I need to earn a living. I need to, you know, like and kind of stuck in that groove. Yeah. How, how can you breathe some possibility into that? Well. You know, and and that's so, and it's very real, and it's real for me, and it's real, it's real for me. I, I know it, and and it th there is a little bit of a, a there's a challenge there because you you may not have. I think part of it is you you need to be really clear what you're deciding. Now, it, you may decide that right now it's more important to stay and keep things status quo. Because that's what you need right now. But be really clear with yourself that you're making that decision. And actually, in, in, in being clear and making that decision, a little bit of the stress and anxiety will go away. Because you're not saying never. You're just saying right now, this is what I need to do. And, and so be really honest. What is, it that, what is it that you need financially? But the tricky thing is, is that so many of us get stuck into... That's just an excuse. Yeah. It, it's, it's a distraction. It's an excuse. And it's a really, really good one because no one's going to challenge that one, right? You know, yeah. you have to earn a living. You need to take care of your children. You need to take care of your, yourself, your family, your home. And so no one challenges it. So I just say uh, it's always take another look. If something's not quite lining up, if someone's saying I'm miserable, I'm miserable, I'm unhappy, but I have to do it, I will challenge them on that because there is something that can be changed. It, it, it may not be the actual job, but there is something that can be changed. And in your experience, what's it an excuse for? Well, you know what? We're all so much more comfortable with what we know. <laughs> and um, it's just easier to suffer because we know it. At least we know what we're going to be suffering for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, right? <laughs> I mean, at least we know because if you do something different, you don't know how you're going to suffer. You don't know what horrible things are going to happen. It's the unexpected. We're afraid of what could happen. We're afraid of... Um, you know, we're afraid of negative things, but we're also afraid of, well, shit, like, what if I, what if I, what if I was meant to do this all along and I've, I've wasted the last 40 years doing this? I mean, that's pretty scary too. So yeah. there's a, there's a number of different things that, that, it, that you might be fearful of that might keep you that just that, you know what? It's easier this way. I'll just stay. I know this. <laughs> I know this pain. I know the suffering and there's some good days and there's some good moments. So I'm just going to stick with this. But what I say to people who say that I just be really clear and be, you know, take it on. If that's what you're going to take on, take it on. Okay. I'm going to do this. I mean, it's like when I used to work with people with, you know, who, who smoked cigarettes that wanted to stop. But they kind of didn't. And I said, well, just decide. Maybe you're not ready. Just say, I'm not ready right now. Yeah. You know, I love smoking my cigarette. It makes me feel good. <laughs> Even though I hate it. <laughs> so. so if you were to kind of um, say, okay, what is your top tip for someone who wants to do what they love but haven't yet got there? Like kind of what, would, what message would you want to give? So are we assuming this is someone who wants to make a change? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're in some way. So, um, you know, they're, they're in the kind of uncomfortable, comfortable place. Yeah. Or comfortably uncomfortable. That's probably a better way of saying it. <laughs> Either way, I think would work. Yeah. Um, top advice. See, the thing is, is I think you have to be really honest with yourself. It gets back to what I just said. You have to be really honest. Is it worth it? Because it might not be. But if it's worth it, if you really truly want to make some change and some shift and some different different way of being 
in your life, in your work, how, you know, in relationships, in your health, how you view your body, how you are with your kids, all those things, if you really want it, the, I, I guess my, my first piece of advice would be be clear about what it is you're wanting. Yeah. Start, you know, write it down, in, in, envision it and, and picture it and, and be really, really clear because the universe is not going to suddenly just plop something in front of you if you don't even know what it is you want. I will always remember you for um, saying something to me, which is be clear on your intention. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of your mantra almost. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I'm, I'm a real stickler with helping people to get 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 clear and don't get wishy-washy and don't, don't, um, don't, um, yeah, the smoke screens and the, there's so much, there's so much stuff and we all, we all do it. I mean, I, I do it too. That's why I can identify it in other people. But, um, but you know, it's really, it really is, is be clear and you would be surprised. I think that's one of the most difficult questions that I ask people is what is it you really want? I don't think that anyone answers that the first time I ask them. Isn't that amazing, and and you'd think that you'd know <laughs> if you're unhappy in what you're doing. What, I mean, people might throw out there, "Well, I want more money," but you know, when you start asking, "What does that really mean? What does it look like? What does a day look like?" A lot of times, that's not even it. So even that's kind of a smokescreen. You know, it's it's yeah. a socially acceptable answer to want more money, a nicer car, or whatever, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> Or to tell you what they don't want equally. And that's, and that's usually what happens when you ask people, what do you really want? Well, I know I don't want, I hate this job and this. And you're like, what? <laughs> so I, I guess that would be, answer that question. That would be my number one tip. And Thank really you. answer it. Don't, that's, don't, you know. That's fantastic. So if, Laura, if um, people want to get in contact with you, they want to listen to your radio show, how do we do that? Oh. Uh, please listen to my radio show. It's really, really fun. And since it's internet based, it's available all over the world if you have a connection to internet. And, um, probably the best way right now, I'm, I actually have a new website that's under, con under construction, but the best, the best place to contact me would be either, um, uh, my new website will get direct www.drlauracl d-r-l-a-u-r-a-c-i-e-l dot com um, the best place right now is probably Facebook same same name Dr. Laura C.L. I'm also on Twitter but same same name d-r-l-a-u-r-a-c-i-e-l perfect Laura and I'd love to hear from anyone Absolutely. and I, I have to take questions on my radio show so bring it on <laughs> <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Vanessa. Great to be here. Cool.